So let's look at the structure of I3 minus. So we have three iodines joined together. So iodine is happy at seven, but we got three of those iodines bound together. So that's 21 valence electrons. The minus sign allows us, or allows us to recognize that it's gained one electron. Remember, you gain an electron, you become a minus, minus one. So we got to fill 22 valence electrons around the I3 minus molecule. Well, there's no dispute on what will be our central atom. So that's going to be I. It's going to be bound to one I, and then it's going to be bound to another I. But the issue becomes with lone pairs. So we got to do 22 here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And then I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to put it back on the central atom. So let's count this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. I think that would be the best representation of I3 minus. Okay, so it's going to be two bonds and uh, three lone pairs. Two bonds and three lone pairs of the molecule of I3 minus. <coughs> and uh, so two plus three is five, so this will be an one from S. So I need to get five of them, right? So three I can get from P. P accommodates three slots, uh, each one with uh, two pairs of electrons. So spin up, spin down. So one plus three is four, and then I'm going to get one slot for the, from the Ds. So one D plus three Ps is four, four plus one S is five. So that's going to accommodate two bonds and three lone pairs. So this is an sp3D hybridized iodine. And two bonds and three lone pairs. So let's look that up in our table in which the central atom has lone pairs. So the number of bonding pairs here is going to be um, two. And then the number of lone pairs here is going to be three. Two bonds, three lone pairs. So two bonds and three lone pairs is going to be right here. Two bonds, three lone pairs. Okay. And that molecular geometry of that situation is linear. So those three lone pairs of electrons actually straighten up the molecule. Okay. So they make the molecule kind of flat like a straight line. And you see one pair of electron is out on the plane of the paper. One pair of electron is coming towards us. The other pair of electron is going in the back of the plane of the paper. That distortion of the three electrons actually straighten out this molecule. We usually like to think of lone pairs as bending and distorting a molecule, you know. Uh, but this one uh, makes it a molecular geometry of linear. Okay, so we'll draw something like this. The three electrons actually establish what's known as a trigonal bipyramidal shape. And this will be a nonpolar molecule. So here's the structure of I3 minus. So um, let's do, before we draw, uh, we draw the three-dimensional structure of the molecule, um, let's do a little bit of a formal charge and, and um, octet rule calculation. Also, um, why this is nonpolar is that you see this pair of electrons is pulling. So that's partial negative. This pair of electrons here is pulling uh, at an angle. Uh, so when you add this angle and with that angle, they s sort of build up on each other. So the net effect is going to be this. That's pulling straight to the right. That's counterbalanced by this pair of electrons straight on pointing to the left. So they cancel one another. And obviously, this I with its own pull electronegativity is going to cancel that I with its own pull of electronegativity. So this is a nonpolar molecule. Okay, so that's why this is nonpolar. Uh, now um, what I want to do is talk about the, um, which is what I should have done at the very beginning, is talk about formal charge and the octet rule. So um, this iodine is the same as that iodine because they're both single bonded to the center iodine. So this outer iodine, let's look at the formal charge. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Iodine is happy at seven. Seven minus seven is zero. Octet rule for this floor, for this outer iodine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this iodine is 
properly attired with the octet rule. Same thing with this iodine because it's still single bonded, so uh, that's fine. You flip the molecule, these outer iodine substituents are going to be the same. Let's look at the formal charge and octet rule considerations for the center iodine. For that situation, we'll look, uh, we'll use this purple one. All right, so the formal charge is most important. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, iodine is happy at seven. Seven minus eight is minus one. So that minus formal charge goes into the center atom. Okay, so let's do that again, just in case um, there's any confusion on this matter. Okay, so formal charge of the center iodine, okay, circling it in orange. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Iodine is happy at eight. There's seven around it, so the formal charge of that center iodine is minus one. Lo and behold, you're get drawing the structure who has a formal charge of minus one. It's on the center iodine. Usually we like the formal charges on the center iodine. All right, the octet rule for this iodine, the center one, one, two, here you count everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So this iodine has picked up an expanded octet. So a lot of violations here. The expanded octet is one violation, but that's okay. It's not so much a violation. Uh, but what's weird here is that minus formal charge, which is okay uh, because the problem tells you that the uh, Lewis structure does contain a minus formal charge. So I3 minus a nonpolar molecule. The strange thing here is that it's linear, so the three electron pairs distort the molecule to such an extent that it gets it to a straight line. And uh, it's a nonpolar molecule because the electrons pull in equal and opposite directions to each other. It is also an sp3d hybridized iodine. That is how we are accommodating five, two of which are bonds, three of which are lone pairs.